Good morning everyone, welcome to today's lesson on the normal distribution. Now before we look at the actual normal distribution, it is a good idea for us to quickly recap standard deviation. Because to be honest, the normal distribution has a lot to do with the standard deviation. Hopefully you remember how to find the standard deviation, and hopefully you remember that, that the actual definition of a standard deviation is basically looking at the spread of scores in relation to the mean. So it looks at how the scores have been spread out in comparison to what the mean is. Often um, standard deviation is denoted by like a little O with a little cap on it or like X there. So for example I have a big standard deviation, let's say a standard deviation of 10, it means the scores are small spread out. For example we might have a mean of let's say 50 and then if we have a standard deviation of 10, it means either side of that mean it would be 50, 60 and then 40, and then it would be 70 and then 30. So you can see that the scores are spread out um, like that way. Whereas if I have a standard deviation of just 1, let's have a look at what happens with my spread of scores. 51, 52, 49, 48. So you can see in the first example where it had a big standard deviation, the scores are spread out between, in this case, 30 and 70, whereas with a standard deviation of just 1, they're spread out between 48 and 52, and they're much more bunched or grouped. Sometimes you might have a look at it like a graph. You might store this, the top first standard deviation, might look like this, where the second standard deviation might look like this. So again, you can s or even say that the second standard deviation looks at it having a cluster. Okay, so standard deviation looks at the spread of scores in relation to the mean. Now, um, when we have a large set of, of scores, what tends to happen is that the scores tend to come out into a bell shape, or a sort of what we call a symmetrical bell shape. For example, what I mean by that is you might have something that looks like this. Uh, mine's not perfect, okay? Where you can have your mean in the middle. And obviously, thinking about it, if you've got the mean, majority of people score around the mean. That's why it's the mean, okay? And what we actually say, if we just cut that there and say that's let's say one standard deviation either side. Okay, so that's one standard deviation, two standard deviations either side. We say that 68% of all scores lie within one standard deviation of the mean. So 68% of the scores lie within one standard deviation either side of my mean. That last example when we looked at, um, let's say we, we said that it was 50, that would mean that 68% of scores lie between 60 and 40. Okay, which is about right because most people will score closer to the mean. Now, if we go a little bit further out, let's say to two standard deviations away from the mean. So if we think about it, we looked at a standard deviation, that first example, being 10, so two standard deviations would be 20 marks above, which would make it 70, and 20 marks below, which would make it 30. And what we actually say there, we say that 95% of all scores lie between two standard deviations of the mean. Let's go to three standard deviations now. We then say, after we do the 95%, we say that 99.7%, oops, excuse me, we say that 99.7% of all scores lie within three standard deviations of the mean. So three standard deviations will be 30 marks either side. 
Okay. So this is what we call a normal distribution, okay, or the bell curve. And it is really important you need to know how to draw this bell curve out. Now we can have it like this, so often that's the way we first think about it, and obviously, you know, the whole thing would be 100% of scores. But if I looked at splitting these up, for example, I might want to know what percentage of people score between 50 and 60. Okay, which is when one standard deviation. Well, we know within two standard deviations, okay, well, let's say one standard deviation either side of the mean, okay, 68%, it means these two middle parts must be 34%. Okay, if we take the 68% away from the 95%, we're left with 13.5% either side. Then we're left here with 2.35% and 2.35%, which makes up to 99.7%. And obviously then we're left with 0.3%, which would be 0.15% either side. Okay, so again, how I got that was basically I said, well, this width here was 68%, so we divide by 2, we break up to 34% either side. We know the difference of there, and then divide it by 2, get the 13.5%, etc. The same thing for the 2.35%, and the same thing for 0.15%. Okay, it's really important, but you might ask why. Okay, well, you're going to get questions, right? That might say something about, you know, um, what percentage of people would score between 60 and 70 in this test? Well, between 60 and 70 would be between the first standard deviation and the second standard deviation. I would say 13.5% of people scored between 60 and 70. We might say what percentage of people scored above 40? Above 40. Well, above 40, well, we got a full half of it, which would be 50%, plus that extra 34% which would give me a total of 84%. Okay, so you can sort of see here what we're sort of doing with our percentages. So this is why it's really important that you learn this particular bell curve. Go have a look in your textbook um, and start practicing in, in drawing these out. Um, now I've got these things here, one standard deviation, two standard deviation, three standard deviations. Um, you may have heard of things called Z scores. Okay? And all a Z score is, okay, it is these numbers here. If you have a Z score of one, it means you are one standard deviation above the mean. If you have a Z score of negative one, then you are one standard deviation below the mean. If you have a standard deviation of 2, then you have two standard, deviation, standard deviations above the mean. If you had a, a z-score of 3, you have three standard deviations above. Of negative 2, you have two standard deviations below. Maybe 3, you have three standard deviations below the mean, etc. Okay. I know it's all a bit hard to take in to start off with, but um, believe me, it gets easier. We're going to look at a few questions now to help out, and I'll show you the way that I would do this. First question reads, In the town of Burrow, the ages of the residents are normally distributed. Straight away, that means we've got this little table here. That's my mean. Um, normally distributed. The mean age is 40. I'm going to put 40 there. That's our mean. I always like to draw these little tables out to help me with these questions as well. The standard deviation is 12 years. Okay, so that means that one standard deviation, okay, would be 52. Two standard deviations there would be 12 more than that, so it'd be 64. And likewise, 12 underneath 40, so 40 take away 12, would be 28. So that'd be negative one standard deviations. And take 12 away again. We get 16, we'd be negative two standard deviations, and obviously the rest would follow as well. Approximately what percentage of the residents are younger than 52? Well, by looking at my table here, this is where my 52 is, 
okay so we know that that's 34 percent we want this people who are younger than 52 so that includes one whole half of it which is 50 percent plus that 34 percent which gives me an answer of 84 percent so 84 percent which is D of all um, residents here are younger than 52 okay so you can see why this table is very helpful okay likewise you could have put the 34 percent you could put 13.5 the 2.35 and the 0 0.15 and add all those things up but we should already know that that should be 50 percent anyway okay next question in a normally distributed set of scores the mean is 23 so again normal distribution the mean is 23 and the standard deviation is 5 okay so one standard deviation or one z score okay is 28 two z scores or two standard deviations okay it's going to be 33 five under that will be 18 and then that will, will be 13 okay again I could go down to 3 or up to 3 I'm just going to do that, those ones for the, mo for the most part at the moment approximately what percentage of the scores will lie between 18 and 33 okay so 18 I want these ones I want this one and I want this one okay so what are my percentages we know this is 34 percent now this is 34 percent you know this is 13.5 percent so 34 plus 34 plus 13.5 equals 68 plus 13.5 which is 81.5 percent which is D okay so again it's very important that you know your percentages okay next question results for an aptitude test are given as Z scores in this test Di gained Di gained a Z score of 3 the test excuse me the test and that would draw my little bell curve has a mean of 55 and has a C standard deviation of 6 okay so we've got one standard deviation okay which is going to be 61 two standard deviations which is going to be 67 three standard deviations which is going to be 73 now we want a Z score of 3 okay now Z score of 3 means it's three standard deviations above the mean which this is which means it must have been a score of 73 okay so a Z score of 3 gave you an actual score of 73 because it was three standard deviations or three lots of six above the mean of 55 which can give you 73 so you can see you can do the picture the picture way or you can sort of do it in a more mathematical way either way you get the answer of 73 okay two more questions to go results for a reading uh, for a reading test are given as Z scores in this test Kim gained a Z score equal to negative 2 interpret the Z score in terms of the mean and the standard deviation of the test well for the first bit a Z score of negative 2 represents or means represents 2 standard deviations below the mean okay below the mean that's what you have to really say for that you have to say that the z-score negative 2 represents two standard deviations below the mean now it's worth two marks so most likely if you had said that it represents two, two standard deviations you would have got one mark then you actually specify it's below the mean because it was negative 2 okay a negative 2 then obviously that gives you a second mark okay the second part then says if a test had a mean of 75 and a standard deviation of 5 calculate the actual mark by Kim so this is giving us an actual uh, actual scenario so again I'm going to draw my little 
norm curve, we have a mean of 75 and a standard deviation of 5. Now I could do the ones on the right hand side, but remember we're looking at a standard deviation of negative 2. So I only really need to have these two left of it. Okay, so if it's standard deviation of 5, which means that's 75, so that means that's 70, that means that's 65, therefore her real mark was 65. If you want to do it a more mathematical way, you can say 75 subtract two lots of the standard deviation, okay, which will be obviously 75 take away 10, which equals 65. Alrighty, so it's not too hard. Last one, the normal distribution shown has a mean of 170 and a standard deviation of 10. They've already drawn the bell curve for you. Okay, I'm just going to write in there my, my mean there. Roberto has a raw score in the shaded region. What could his score be? Okay, so what could his Z score be? Well, this is one standard deviation, this is two standard deviations. So any answer between one and two standard um, Z scores, sorry, Z scores would give you an answer. So 1.5, 1.2, 1.3. Any Z score between one and two will give you an answer there because you can see it's between one and two. What percentage of the data lies in the shaded region? Okay, well we know this is 34%, this is 13.5%. Oops, that gives my answer. Simply 13.5%. So you can see it's really not that challenging. Okay, but the most important thing guys, the most most important thing you need to be able to draw up that table. So again, let's always start with your mean. Okay, your one and negative one, which is 34% either side, or a total of 68%. Then we've got our next line, which is negative two and positive two, okay, which is 13.5%, or a total of 95%. We then go to three standard deviations, either side, or Z score of negative three and positive three, which gives us a further 2.35%, which gives us a total of 99.7%, and then last of all, you have 0.15% either side, which obviously added all up together would give you 100% and hopefully I got those ones right <laughs> because I'm pretty sure they are. Okay, so make sure you practice all this work please. Use your textbooks, go through the whole of the answers or go through the clippings that I've given you on the file from the HSC papers. Get to know this stuff really, really well because there's going to be a few questions in your trials and there'll be a few questions I have to see about this stuff. Hope it made sense. I'll be back in class tomorrow to help you out. Cheers.